March 7, 1997. On a cool but windy Friday morning, a small but distinguished crowd gathers at Andrews Air Force Base, a U.S. military facility just outside Washington, D.C. They have come to say farewell to Dr. Chetty Barrett Jagan, President of the Republic of Guyana. President Jagan died early the previous morning at the Walter Reed Army Medical Center in Washington, D.C. He was surrounded by his wife, Janet, his son, Chetty Jr., better known as Joey, his daughter, Nadira, and their families. His death comes only two weeks before his 79th birthday. As he had done in life, President Jagan fought courageously to the end, trying to recover from a heart attack that he suffered on February 15th. On December the 9th, you will be exercising your right to vote, a right which was won for you by the PPP in the early 1950s. One of the first battles we fought was for the right of every Guyanese to vote. Universal adult suffrage was and is for us a fundamental question. Without that, there can be no democracy. And without democracy, there can be no progress. And so today, Family, friends, Guyanese and U.S. government officials and military personnel are on hand to witness the honor guard just before the president's body is flown home back to Guyana where he would be laid to rest. A Guyana Airways Boeing 757 arrived around dawn with an official delegation from home. Among them, Ministers Ripu Deman Passad and Sri Chand and Commissioner of Police Laurie Lewis. Together with the immediate family and Guyana's ambassador to the U.S., Dr. Rodin Ishmael, they would accompany the casketed remains draped proudly with a golden arrowhead. At this somber event, Guyana makes history in the United States of America. Officials from the U.S. State Department recalled that it was probably the first time in recent history that military honors were accorded to a foreign head of state who had died in the United States. John Hamilton of the State Department leads off the day's tributes. Ladies and gentlemen, my colleagues from the State Department and the medical staff of the Walter Reed Hospital are here this morning to pay our last respects and to say farewell on behalf of the American people to a foremost statesman of the Caribbean region during the last half century. President Chetty Jagan was a guiding force in Guyana's national life and politics for more than 50 years. He was a founder of the People's Progressive Party, which led Guyana's movement for independence. He was one of those rare leaders for whom the promises of the political campaign became the obligations of his government. He put the interests, concerns of his people, the working poor especially, above other considerations. He was a creative and principled humanist who sought innovative solutions to the particular problems of income distribution. He brought the same humanity and forgiving nature to his conduct of foreign affairs that he practiced in domestic and national affairs. The United States was proud to have developed the strong bonds of confidence and mutual respect and friendship that characterized our relations in recent years. We shared a common commitment to democratic government and to the goals of social justice and equity for which President Jagan labored and which he embodied. We extend our heartfelt sympathy to you and to your family, Mrs. Jagan, and to the people of Guyana. Our prayers are with you as you accompany President Jagan on his last trip home to Guyana. Distinguished Mr. John Hamilton, Deputy Assistant Secretary of State. First Lady Janet Jagan, Joey, Nadira, Nadia, Mark, children. Members of the Walter Reed Military Medical Center, ladies and gentlemen, this is the saddest moment in the history of our country. 
the light that brilliantly illuminated every nook and corner of that land has been extinguished. The news of the death of our dear, beloved president, leader, has torn our country and plunged it into grief and sorrow. People from all walks of life have in so many ways demonstrated their respect, love, admiration, and their incapability of facing the moments of parting with him. He has led that country for more than 50 years with distinction. His work was not confined to the geographical borders of Guyana, it went beyond the Caribbean and even other parts of the world. Because of his earnest commitment to the well-being and welfare of humanity at large, Dr. Chedi Jagan has won the respect of people from all levels of society and in all, all parts of the world. Our presence here this morning, if I use the term to escort this distinguished family to Guyana, is only a partial demonstration of how the land feels. If the facilities were there, the entire land would have been here with you, First Lady, and your family. I've seen people strong in the past, but weakened at the saddest news that ever struck the country. But we all share the conviction that while our beloved and dear President has gone. His work, his deeds, his commitment, his earnestness, his sincerity will live on and will give us all the strength to continue the journey he has so ably guided and led for a number of years. He is unequal in many respects. This morning, I want, on behalf of the government and people of Guyana, on behalf of the Jagan's family, to sincerely thank His Excellency President Bill Clinton, the government of the United States of America, for all they have done to restore the health of our dear President. The response of the United States government has moved us. We will always remember what you have done for our dear President. And I want to convey to you our greatest and most sincerest appreciation and gratitude. How can I part with the microphone this morning without offering special thanks to the doctors, the nurses, the staff of Walter Reed Military Army Medical Center. From all reports emanating from the lips of our First Lady, they have worked beyond the call of duty and they have, they have done everything conceivably possible to bring our President back to health. I want to assure you that Guyana, the Guyanese people, we from the government and the People's Progressive Party Civic, the Jagan's family will always remember you. And you, what you've done have made an indelible imprint in our minds. Particularly the care and concern by His Excellency, the President Bill Clinton himself. What has happened will not simply 
bring us closer together, but will strengthen the bond of friendship which already exists. We part with you this morning, but we remember your kindness and the wonderful gesture to restore the health of our president and the care which you have shown to members of the Jagan family. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, do accept our sincerest appreciation and gratitude, that is, the government of the United States, President Bill Clinton in particular, members of the Walter Reed Army Medical Center. We love our president, dearly so too. For us, his work will be immortalized. And I think Guyana will witness one of the greatest heroes parting, and they will show it in no uncertain term. What is very encouraging as we part with the shows of Guyana this morning to come to Washington was the unity which covers every corner of the land and the great concern of the entire Guyanese nation. Once again, Mr. Hamilton, do convey our thanks and appreciation to your government, to President Bill Clinton, for the hospital, and to all those who in so many ways have shown kindness and concern and have contributed so magnanimously for the restoration of the health of our dear president. Once again, thank you very, very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, family, doctors, staff, uh, U.S. representatives, uh, I would just like to, uh, it's very hard to add to the thanks of, uh, of Rip here, but I'd just like to thank again the U.S. government from the first movement of my father from Ghana through Panama to Walter Reed. Uh, it was, you know, very, very moving and very professionally done with all kindness and love for my father, from the nurses and the doctors, I must pay them a special tribute for the work they did. And I hope that one day, God willing, they could come to Ghana and enjoy our country without the pressures of medicine. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the government of Guyana for uh, providing us with this return home. I'd like to thank the United States government for looking after everything in detail. Most of all, I'd like to thank our immediate family, Clive, Auntie Edith, the, 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 brother, the cousins, everybody for coming here. I'm sorry some of you can't see my father, but I'm sure you have a picture of him in full life, and you remember those days in full life. I'd just like to read to you a quick thing that I wrote at his bedside as he was passing away. I made some notes. I was with him to the end. Uh, you are in a... I'm writing to him, really. You are on, on a special bed provided by the U.S. Army, a very special bed that costs a lot of money. Everything done by the U.S. Army and personnel was the best for you, all the way from Guyana to here at Walter Reed. At this time, 11.30, Wednesday, 5th, March, you are breathing by respirator with intravenous drips, etc. But you are at peace in a world of sleep deep dreams before you exit this narrow world. You have made your mark on history. You have given your most. You have tried your best. I hold your left hand and it is motionless but warm. Last time you squeezed my hand, you gave me an indication of hope. All hope is lost now and you are dying. Dying, you of all people, you who are supposed to live much longer. To a hundred years old. How horrible, how terrible, how unfair. You tried so hard to bring a new beginning, a new frontier of energy, to a picket fence of corruption, lethargy, and despair. Look at you, 
lying here without a mission really completed. You wanted another term to try and set the nation moving in the right direction. Your color is still there in your face. Your head, forehead, feels so fine. But it is your beautiful chest which I like touching. I wish I could rub your back and your legs and your hands, but it's too late. I can't anymore. Time has run out. Thank you very much. In the background, the U.S. military band plays the Guyana National Anthem as members of the Guyana Defense Force execute the honor guard. The familiar strains of the beloved anthem interrupted by the resounding of cannons firing off a 21-gun salute. The Star-Spangled Banner National Anthem of the United States accompanies the officials, family and friends who remain distinguished even in their hour of grief.
the GDF contingent recesses, ready to take charge of their fallen commander-in-chief. The U.S. military contingent now processes off the airbase. They will be followed by the band. It is still cool and windy despite the brilliant sunshine and warm blue skies. And the GAC carrier that will take this delegation and its precious charge back to Guyana stands out boldly amidst the backdrop of a U.S. Army base. As the aircraft taxis and then lifts off, it brings to mind the lyrics of a national song. And though I roam o'er hills and vales, and brave old Neptune's foam, o'er crags and rocks and mossy dells, I still will turn me home. For when at length I come to die, I want no gilded tomb. Just let me rest within thy breast where thy sweet flowers bloom.